Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we can have a look at the latest from the live radar run through the weather warnings as we do have wind warnings issued in the north as we are going to see a named storm skirt to the north of Scotland. Now this area of low pressure we have been watching for quite a few days now and we thought for the UK it would just give a period of quite strong gusty winds. However when it exits the UK it is going to strengthen further into Scandinavia and the Met Office in Denmark have named it Storm Otto. So technically a named storm is moving through to uh, through Scotland. However, its most severe impacts will not be over the UK. It will be over into Scandinavia, but we will still see 70 to 80 miles per hour in terms of wind gusts. And we do have yellow warnings issued quite widely in the north. So we'll of course, have a look at that. But I do want to stress that this name storm is for Scandinavia and Denmark specifically, not for the UK. However, we can, of course, still call it Storm Otto and we'll have a look at, as I said, at its uh, associated impacts. If we do have a look at the longer range after that, we'll look at the UKV, run through the precipitation and the temperature throughout the next five days into next week. And then we'll have a look at the GFS, GM, ECMWF and the ensembles. As it does it likely, we will end the month quite cold. It's looking really, really likely now that we do see a northerly wind come in in around a week's time or so, pushing proper chilly Arctic air in potential for snow especially in the north and just widely colder conditions however it is getting towards the end of february heading towards the start of spring so the sun is going to do a lot more uh, warming during the day so temperatures in the day still probably likely to get into the mid to maybe even high single digits in places but of course we'll have to see the strength of those air masses to see how cold it will be and of course we've got to keep an eye on the ssw propagating through the atmosphere as that could continue the cold weather into March. So have a look at all of that in today's video. So do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well the links in the description. So if you look on the live radar you can see it is generally dry out there today. Weather front that had spread through the southeast overnight now into parts of Europe and most areas are going to be in a cloud and a few patches of drizzle but it's not too bad out there. Temperatures are still generally quite mild for the time of year but you can see more rain is approaching western Scotland as I'm recording this around 11 a.m. Again, indicating that we are going into more of an Atlantic flow, and that is, of course, going to culminate in the uh, in Storm Otto tomorrow, which will be moving through the north. If we do put on the temperatures, I said around 11 a.m., it is generally pretty mild, especially further southwards. Further northwards, slightly cooler air mass, but again, still probably average to slightly above average. In the south, you can see a lot of yellows appearing. Again, those temperatures into the low teens at 11 a.m., really, really mild for the time of year. Um, again, we're expecting to see sort of mid to high single digits this time of year, maybe 7 to 9 degrees for the average high in London. But here we're seeing 12 to maybe even as high as 14 or 15 degrees today and in the coming days as well, before it does turn quite a bit colder, as I said, towards the end of the month. If you look at the weather warnings now, we do have widespread yellow warnings for wind. Again, we had a look at these in detail yesterday, but they have been updated, actually uh, strengthened. So the update has been uh, the likelihood and peak gusts have increased and start time also brought forward and extended to include parts of Shetland. So we do look at the further details again. Gusts of 60 to 70 miles per hour are likely as possible as high as 80 miles per hour for exposed coasts and hills. High impact and climbing the likelihood scale now. So again, if we do see some very slight alterations in this, we could see an amber warning from this. And of course, normally associated amber warning for wind with a named storm. So you can see how it is very close to being named by the Met Office itself. But of course, the Denmark uh, Met Office has got there before us. Denmark Met Office has got there before us. And of course, they're gonna be seeing even more severe impacts than the UK will be seeing. But of course, even though it hasn't been named by the UK Met Office, it still will bring some quite severe impacts. So of course we've got this warning that is from 3am tomorrow until 3pm tomorrow. And then we've got another warning from 5am tomorrow until 2pm tomorrow as well. Very strong winds developing through Friday morning associated with Storm Otto, making disruption to travel. And again, area extending to South Yorkshire, likelihood increased and period of validity adjusted again 55 to 65 miles per hour quite widely and 75 miles per hour are possible again high likelihood or 
high impact or high climbing the likelihood of scale as well so we'll have to see exactly what does happen with this but the potential there for an amber warning if things do get slightly more severe we are still about sort of 12 to 16 hours away from the strongest wind starting to arrive so i doubt we'll see any upgrade for these warnings but you can't rule it out so we'll just have to see make sure you do keep up to date with the met office warnings and of course on their social media as well if we do now go over to the UKV and have a look at the wind gusts initially before we have a look at the precipitation and the temperature. So you can see over the course of this evening, those stronger wind gusts start to arrive around midnight. We start to see 50, maybe 60 miles per hour, and it increases up to 70 or 80 around 5, 6 a.m. or so, and lasts all the way roughly to lunchtime. You can see it intensifies as it exits eastern Scotland, and that's why it's been named by the Danish Met Office, because they're going to be seeing 80 to 90 or even 100 mile per hour wind gusts. And eventually those winds do gust, die, that gust uh, do die down. So by lunchtime, it's early afternoon. Those wind gusts should start to ease, but could still be 40, maybe 50 or 60 miles per hour in a few spots. And then eventually we do see more blustery conditions at times, but again, nothing too severe for the rest of this run. If you go over to the precipitation and the temperature, you can see that rain has cleared the southeast through this morning. And it's generally a cloudy, but a bit of a drizzly picture out there. More precipitation heading into the north through this evening. Again, weather fronts associated with the storm Otto. And we do see some heavier rain for a time, but nothing too severe. Some bright colours, so it could be some high intensities. But again, it's not too long lasting. It should clear through by the early hours of the morning. And then blustery showers moving in and potentially a few wintry showers mixed in with that. Through Friday, another weather front approaching from the southwest, giving some rain for the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. And eventually that does spread in and gives quite a bit of rain overnight into early hours of Saturday. For it does sort of clear away and die out through Saturday afternoon into the evening before it does turn a little bit drier. But more weather fronts pushing in again all this westerly momentum starting to push through, giving us some more precipitation. But the high pressure is trying to hang on, as we'll see in a minute with the longer range models. So it is always going to stunt the intensity of any of these lows. Uh, Storm Otto really only impacting us because it's skirting the north of Scotland. Any low trying to push in through central areas uh, is really going to struggle. And that's why we do see weather fronts push in. We do see periods of cloud moving, but no massive deluges. And they all seem to fizzle out the further southwards and eastwards they do move. If you look at the max temperatures now, you can see, of course, this afternoon again, another day of 10 to 14 degrees in places. Again, very mild for the time of year. Overnight temperatures don't drop away all too much. Still, perhaps, into the low teens, 10 to 12 degrees overnight, with a big warm wedge of air associated with the low-pressure system of Storm Otto. And into the afternoon tomorrow, we see temperatures Still very mild in the south, 14 or even 15 degrees proper spring-like conditions. Further northwards, though, a lot cooler with an Arctic air mass coming in behind the low pressure system. Into Saturday, we do see another milder wedge push in for the south, and that gives temperatures around 10 to 12 degrees, perhaps in the afternoon, or even higher, maybe 13 or 14 degrees by 3 p.m. But further northwards, a lot colder with cooler air holding on. Again, the battle between low pressure and high pressure being shown here in the air masses. Beyond that into Sunday, still cold in Scotland, but very mild in the south before mild air comes in for all. And by Monday afternoon, it's very mild again, 12 to 15 degrees. But eventually, we will start to turn colder next week. Maybe in around uh, sort of Thursday, Friday next week, so around seven, eight days' time, cold Arctic air masses will move back in once again. Uh, uh, we're not expecting anything too ridiculous at this stage, maybe mid-single digits for the highs in the day and overnight temperatures below freezing. Again, nothing too unusual for winter and nothing too unusual for this winter where we've seen multiple uh, pretty cold spells. Again, we haven't seen too much snow this winter apart from a few localised areas, but it has been really quite cold with a lot of frosts and things like that. So that's going to continue into the end of February. But it will come quite a shock to the system, going from 14, 15 degrees over the next five days or so, down to four or five degrees and overnight frosts. It will feel like we are plunged back into December or January once again, not heading into March. So I must stress that, yes, it's not going to be ridiculously cold, but it will feel pretty chilly compared to what we have at the moment. If you look at the longer range now, look at the GFS, you can run through, you can see Storm Otto just to our north there. Doesn't look like it's too severe of a low pressure system, but it's very small with those tight isopars. As it moves into Scandinavia, you can see it does intensify, and that's why it's been named by the Danish Met Office. 
Beyond that, it moves out into Europe and we go into a westerly flow. High pressure in the south, low pressure in the north. But watch what happens around a week's time. High pressure ridges up towards Iceland and we pull in a northerly flow. Again, this is not a huge blocking feature, so you wouldn't expect this to last all too long. The high pressure does topple, but actually topples in, over, and to the north of us and starts pulling a bit of an easterly wind. Again, nothing ridiculously cold, but chilly upper air temperatures coming in off the near continent, still relatively cold, and we'd see probably chilly, colder than average, frosty conditions all the way into the longer term. I must stress, it's all because of the wind direction here. If this high pressure was bringing in a more of a westerly or southerly wind, it would be probably quite mild and spring-like. But with an easterly flow, cooler air masses allowed to move in from the east. Again, upper air temperatures can sometimes be deceiving. Initially, it's quite cold for slightly milder upper air temperatures come in. But of course, at the surface, it would be quite a lot colder. The best way to view this is look at the potential equivalent temperatures, showing still quite a few blues around, showing it is going to be pretty chilly. If we we're going to see anything really mild or spring like you want greens or yellows starting to appear. So, cold in the longer term, GFS definitely with high pressure at the top of us, but nothing ridiculously cold if you're looking for any snowy or very cold conditions or anything remotely close to the beast from the east which I've seen some people promise we'd have to see that high pressure a thousand miles further northwards or so with proper purples pushing in from the east instead of these lighter blues into getting cold air but nothing ridiculously cold if we do look at the GM run see how that does compare again a westerly flow over the coming days Stormorte moving through tomorrow and then into the longer term low pressure in the north high pressure in the south and then we see that northerly wind push in High pressure building over the top of us, a bit more of a muddled picture there with the troposphere polar vortex trying to influence us. But again, it's something we do need to keep an eye on because with the SSW, we'd expect the troposphere polar vortex to weaken significantly in the coming weeks. With the SSW pretty much uh, happening sort of the last few days or today or so, um, depending on exactly when you categorise an official sun stratospheric warming. So we'd expect this tropospheric polar vortex to weaken, and perhaps the models haven't quite picked up on it yet. So that's why I'd always take these charts with a little bit of a pinch of salt when you've got an SSW propagating through the atmosphere, because all this has to do is see this tropospheric polar vortex weaken a little bit, allow the high pressure to push further northwards, and us pulling in more of a proper easterly than a slack easterly. And that's why I would stress that these models will be quite volatile, and we've got to just keep an eye on it. This, regardless, if this sort of pattern did come off, it would still be chilly, it would be frosty, but I wouldn't expect any snow with this at all. If we finish by looking at the ECMWF, you can see a westerly flow over the coming days, storm Monte moving through, and then a generally high pressure in the, uh, in the south, low pressure in the north, and ECMWF doing something very similar, but the high pressure, low pressure is further westwards. And what this does is it parks low pressure over the top of us, it doesn't bring as cold air in, still chilly, but it would be quite unsettled, a lot of shower activity with that, for eventually high pressure builds over the top of us, and to our north however if that high pressure built in just where it is building right now instead of shifting further northwards we would actually probably start to pull in these southwesterly winds so it'll be more of a spring-like milder high pressure system so there is still some uncertainty in the longer term the majority of operational runs recently and today are showing a cooler or cold weather towards the end of the month nothing snowy but probably frosty and foggy and generally below average temperatures but we do need to keep an eye, of course, with the SSW coming through. It could allow the high pressure to shift further northwards, perhaps, perhaps uh, allowing even colder air to move in. And of course, if something like this ECMWF run came off with the proper polar vortex still very strong, it could actually bring us milder spring-like higher pressure. Very subtle differences this time of year can give huge changes in the upper air temperatures and therefore the surface conditions so we will have to see of course with that but as we see the ensembles now the majority are on that cooler spectrum you can see very mild for the next sort of five or six days and then we see a good drop in upper air temperatures by about 10 degrees or so a good three or four degrees below average down to sort of minus five or even lower at 850 hpa Remember, if you want to see a beast from the east or anything like that, and sort of ice days this time of year, you see those upper air temperatures at minus 10 to minus 15, so very few runs even touching on that. So that's why I'd say at this stage, we're not seeing any uh, beast from the east scenario at all. Even though, yes, some runs are showing quite brisk easterly winds, no hugely cold air masses pushing it as of yet. 
In the longer term, through the last couple of days of February into the start of March, those upper air temperatures do increase. But I want to stress that that's when the SSW will start to impact us. So I would, of course, take any runs into early March with a big pitch of salt at this stage, as things will be very volatile and are likely to change quite quickly. Uh, and I said a very short notice. But you can see quite cold period coming up for a good four or five days towards the end of the month. It will be quite a shock to, to the system out there. Again, look at the dew points. Again, well, uh, dropping down about 10 degrees there once again, down well below freezing again, meaning any precipitation that falls out the sky will have the chance of falling as snow, again, especially over high ground in the north. Elsewhere, it will be cold and frosty. And look at those two meter temperatures, again, dropping down to the mid to low single digits. We finished by just looking at the ECMWF ensembles. Very similar, perhaps slightly more pessimistic in terms of the cooler upper air temperatures, but still below average uh, and, and staying there for a good four or five days. So very similar to the GFS, perhaps slightly more pessimistic with those cooler upper air temperatures. But regardless, it will feel cooler and a lot chillier than it is at the moment. And there will be quite a few overnight frosts and generally colder weather. But of course, I must stress that there is a lot going on at the moment. We've got Storm Otto over the next couple of days, and then we've got this cold weather potentially into the last few days of the month, and we've got the SSW coming through high up in the atmosphere. So things are very volatile at the moment, and these models can change at very short notice. So yes, it is looking colder to end the month, and trending slightly milder into the start of March, but these things can change and probably will change very quickly. So make sure you do keep an eye on the models, keep an eye on the videos, of course, we'll be updating you every day, and keep an eye on the Met Office warnings, of course, for the impacts from Storm Otto tomorrow. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.